Hi there, my name is Niall Blakenox. I'm a communications and policy analyst here at Crest Advisory. And today I'm going to talk you through um, how to produce an insightful and impactful report. Um, I'm going to go through four areas. I'm going to talk about what do I actually mean by insightful and impactful. Then I'll uh, look at a bit of the planning that goes into before you start the research, doing the actual research itself, and then looking at the final product. So first of all, what do I mean when I say an insightful and impactful report? I mean, this is not an academic study. This is not something you're going to see produced by a university, which is um, you know, obviously a lot more long-winded and, and, and a huge amount of resource and effort um, over and above um, has gone into it. But it is still evidence-based, research-driven um, and robust, and that is absolutely critical. And second of all, and the key difference here is, is that it will be heard. It is going to be both insightful and impactful. People will listen to it and it will actually achieve some sort of change or, or achieve what you want to, it to be achieving. Too often, very interesting and insightful reports are produced and they don't go anywhere. They sit in a shelf and gather dust. So this is what we want to achieve, want to, want to avoid. Um, and that's where we're really going to talk through this um, today. So off the back of that, the first and most vital ingredient to making sure of those things that we've just talked about is that you need to plan the research and the communications together. They should inform each other, um, they should go hand in hand, um, and you can't really do one without the other. So first of all, you start by asking yourself two questions. Number one, what do you want to achieve? What is the change or the impact that you want to achieve? That could be as simple as informing the public of an interesting or important topic that, you, that you've thought about. It could be setting yourselves up as a thought leader in your specific industry so that people come to you. Or thirdly, it, it, it may be you know, to actually change government policy. These things all actually inform the way you do your research and how you actually produce the end product. So if you, for example, want to change government policy, you'll probably need to start thinking a lot more about including public opinion um, and what the public think really on the matter you're t discussing because uh, that's what politicians and policymakers care about. So, you know, that, that's just an idea of how they can actually inform each other. Um, and that's where we come in to the second question as we've sort of just alluded to, who is the audience and who are the key stakeholders? At the end of the day, when you're producing your report or, or you're releasing it, those key audiences and key stakeholders need to be the ones that you target specifically and they need to be the ones um, that you have kept in mind from the beginning. So do think about that, what they're interested in, what their motivations are, and really let that inform the research that you're going to be doing. And this is the, final, the sort of key message from the planning stage is give the people the evidence that they need to implement the change that you want. Um, and really, if you follow these two steps of those two questions, you shouldn't have a problem doing that. Now, once you've done that, you get on to the stage of actually doing the research. Um, now, this might seem a bit basic, a bit straightforward, but it's important that you really stick to a very structured plan. First of all, desk research. Now, this is the foundation of any solid bit of research or, or, or reporting. This is what you'll have to fall back on if you start getting scrutinized. Again, stick to a clear structure. Don't disappear down the rabbit hole and get distracted, um, but really just set, set your desk research up to then feed into the next stage, which is your additional research. That is your polling, your focus groups, um, anything above and beyond uh, sort of basic desk research, which is really going to add a huge amount of richness um, and improve the robustness even further. But thirdly, and most importantly for us here at Crest, and it's something that we would use very heavily in our reporting and um, our research, is asking the experts and testing our assumptions. It's all well and good if you've done an incredible amount of desk research and some polling and focus groups. There is still margin for error there. So what we do is we take it out to our contacts, the other people that we're working with, who are industry leaders and experts within the criminal justice system, and we'll ask them, are we correct in what we're thinking? Are we following the right lines of inquiry? And they will either tell us, yes, you're spot on, or you need to go back and look at this. And, and that is really how we ensure that our products and our, our, our reports are insightful and impactful. They retain that robustness and they have the validity of being tested against those who are really in the know. And finally, when you've done all of that, you've got to actually produce the end product. Now, it's important 
to remember when you're, when you're producing the end product, not to think of it in terms of a physical document or a single event, but the end product is actually the result that you want to achieve. Have you changed the policy? Have you informed the public? Have you created yourselves or set yourselves up as a thought leader within your industry? That's really what matters. If you think about it in that mindset from the very outset and you think about it at the end when you're sort of uh, finishing it off, you will ensure that you will be successful or at least you'll be able to judge it on merit. So I hope that's been very useful for you. Um, if you're interested in some of the reports that Crest Advisory have produced for our clients, please visit our website. Um, if you're interested in us maybe working with you or working for you, please send us an email as well. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much and enjoy.